That was great. Um, we want to keep encouraging you to keep sharing the good news. Uh, this is not about selling a product. We're sharing the best thing that we have is Jesus, right? Uh, this morning, uh, I think it was Tim Cunningham that approached me at the door. He said, are you being installed today? I said, yes. He said, like a fridge? I said, are you coming with warranty? Uh, how long? That? He said, no, I'm too old for that. So anyway, uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for um, believing that God is still in control. Uh, and he goes beyond our thoughts, way, way beyond our thoughts. And keep praying, keep uh, hanging in there. Uh, God has good things for us. He has good things for Calvary and for Muscatine and for many other places. And we are part of his kingdom. And he's going to use us powerfully. Amen? Okay. Uh, you see that I have a scarf here. It's uh, Spain. Uh, my second country now, well, uh, ish. Uh, there is a soccer game today at 2 p.m. You may not know, but they are playing the, the final Euro Cup soccer. Yeah, that's an art game, an art sport that some people play. Uh, and the good thing is that they are playing against England. So I, I, I'm hoping that all of you support Spain because, right, we were independent from England, right? Uh, years ago. So there you go. You support Spain today. That was the announcement. Um, today, uh, we are in this year's in the book of Proverbs. We're going to be talking about wisdom and speech. And I would like to start with verse, uh, in chapter 1, verse 7. It's kind of the key verse for this year's. And we need to keep this in mind every time when we approach this book. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. You need a Bible. We're going to be using it a lot today. Raise your hand. We'll uh, give you one. Uh, and if you have your devices, we'll do that to you there. And we'll have the, a lot of verses on the screen. Um, now, the question is, do you want to be wise or do you want to be foolish? And it's kind of a pretty clear question, right? I don't think that anyone will say, I want to be foolish. Well, at the end of the day, your actions, our actions show if you're going to be wise and you fear the Lord or you're going to be foolish and you follow your own decisions, your own wisdom. Um, there are two ways. It's a matter of choice. Do you want to follow God's way or follow your own way? And that's the essential question for everything. We're going to be talking about words today, but this applies to everything else. What, God, what does God have to tell us about how we use our words? How do we use the speech that he has given us? And again, I want to use a verse in Proverbs 18.21 that is, to me, essential uh, for this message. The tongue... And it's not just this muscle, right? This, <laughs> our speech has the power of life and death. Life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So you have power of life and death in your words, with your words. You know, Proverbs contains around 150 references about the lips, the tongue, the speech. So this is around 20% of the whole book related to this topic. So this is very important. Words matter. Words matter. How we use them, how often we use them, where we use them, and why we use them are all considerations that wisdom should inform. Even, you know, the tone the volume that we use, those can shape our words for good or for bad. It's not the same thing when you are loud or when you are saying quietly things. Your tone is important. Our words can either build up or tear down. They can illuminate, they can confuse. They can bring peace or they can strife. And if we want to walk in the fear of the Lord and in, in wisdom, 
we must seriously consider our speech. And honestly, I don't think that we do that much because it's something that just comes out, right? It just comes out. It shouldn't. It should be, we should be more careful. But let me share this with you. I, I like to see uh, godly or wise speech as a new language, new language that we are learning. And, you know, I have my personal examples <laughs> about learning a new, a new language. And actually, I think I'm a permanent example of learning a new language. Uh, and some people, it's interesting because some people think, oh, that's easy, right? You just go buy a dictionary and learn words. Easy. You have a lot of vocabulary and you just have the language. It's a little bit more difficult than that. <laughs> just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> because language is not just to be written or, uh, or read. It's also to be spoken. So pronunciation <laughs> comes into the, the, the game. Um, and, you know, I used this example a few weeks ago about these two words that I still don't know how to pronounce. <sighs> this is true. I was working with Google Translator Phonetics yesterday, 20 times. Use and use. It's the same for me. <laughs> same thing for me. And at the end of the day, I said, okay, I, I don't get it. My brain doesn't work to notice the difference. So probably you can help me uh, in one day in 20 years, if I'm still here, or <laughs> if I didn't quit because of this, uh, <laughs> I'll be able to preach using those words rightly. Uh, and there are also a couple of words that are very, very dangerous for me. Uh, actually, I don't use them often, and for sure I won't use those here. Uh, one of those, uh, would you help me with a picture? Yeah, that's a... What is that? A piece of paper. Yeah, I don't, I don't use the R word. That is similar to, next picture, please. That one. <laughs> These are bedding things. It's not a blanket. It's the R thing that, you know? What do you need, a blanket? No, no, the R thing. I, I, I'm not saying that word. J just because it's very close <laughs> to non-appropriate word for a Christian, for anyone, but anyway. Uh, and when you talk about context, uh, context, purpose, tone, backgrounds of the speaker, the background of the listener, all of those are part of the miracle that is communication. And even when you have it all, you have the same language, you were born in the same city, you have similar backgrounds, you have it all, still it is Mystery, right? Couples, husbands, wives, <laughs> you know what I mean? Children, parents, yeah? You say, hey, I'm speaking the same language and we're still not communicating. What is happening here? Now think about this, that we're going to be talking today about, some, about a new language. God's language for us. And we need to learn it. It's not just about knowing the words it's not just about uh, your mind. And I'm not talking about, again, English or Spanish or any other language. We're talking about God's way of speaking. The words that we use, the tone that we use, the purpose, the intention, the time. When we use words, when we kept, keep silent. All of those things are so essential because there is a wise way, a godly way, and there is a folly or dumb way to speak. One that honors God and another one that he rejects. And many of us probably know a lot of the concepts that I'm going to be sharing with you this morning. But that's my prayer. My prayer is that today we can move from information that we may know to transformation that we all need. So even if you know the things that I'm going to say today, my prayer is that it can come from here to here. So our lives will be changed by God's power and by his word. Amen? 
again, some of the concepts uh, that I'll share will be known for you. Uh, some of the things for other of you will be uh, new information. Um, but for all of us, again, information is not enough. We need God speaking his word, which is alive, and transforming our hearts and minds to become more like him and to show his power and glory. And that's the purpose of this message. So no matter what you know or you knew before this message, I challenge you today to open your heart, to receive God's wisdom, and to commit to apply it into your life. Will you pray with me? Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us today to open your word and to receive from you. But Lord, we pray that this won't be only info, information. We need you to change our hearts and our minds to make us more like you. Lord, we need you and everything in our lives needs you. So we want to submit today to your word. You are the authority here. This is not a pastor's words or a speech. This is your word and that's what is bringing life today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So go with me to chapter 8. This is wisdom's calling. Wisdom's calling. Chapter 8, verses 6 to 9. And I'm not going to go in depth in these verses, but I want to show you how good God's way of speaking is. And this is what it says. Listen, for I have and pay attention to this word, trustworthy things to say. I open my lips to speak what is right. My mouth speaks what is true. My lips detest wickedness. All the words of my mouth are just. None of them is crooked or perverse. To the discerning, all of them are right. They are upright to those who have found knowledge. So look at this. His words, God's words are trustworthy, right, true, and just. They are not wicked, crooked, or perverse. That's how we should speak. Imitating our Father in heaven. This is how our speaking should be every day. And you know, the New Testament, and we are in Proverbs, but the whole Bible, and also the New Testament, has a lot to say about how we speak. And for those of you that are taking notes today, and I encourage you to do that, because we, every Sunday, we share a lot of information, a lot of concepts. It's always good to take notes and then review uh, those during the week. But uh, write down these verses, Philippians 4, 8, Matthew 12, 34. Ephesians 4, 29, and James 3, 1 to 12. And that's your homework, okay? Next week, I'll ask you, everyone, every one of you individually, hey, Nick, did you read, did you read those, uh, those verses in everyone? Uh, it's, this is important. It's essential, again, not just information, but words from God that transform our lives. But going back to Proverbs, again, there are so many verses talking about the speech in Proverbs. Uh, but we are using two categories to understand how God's uh, purpose or plan works in our lives. And we are going to be talking about uh, folly speaking and wise speaking. So let's go first with folly speaking. You know, perhaps more damage has been done to lives, to families, to homes, relationships, and even church by the tongue, by our words, than any other means. What we say, how we say it, is important. It is very sad to realize that the tongue can be used to damage people and damage reputations and cause trouble when it should be used to praise God and to worship him, and to pray to him, and to share the good news with other people, right? That's how we should use our speech. But it's sad to realize that a lot of times we don't use it in that way. 
And the book of Proverbs mentions several sins. And I would like to um, highlight just three of those related to speech. Um, some of those are lying, flattery, slander, gossip, talking too much, talking too soon, or quarreling. So we are not covering them all, but let's start with the first one, lying. Proverbs 12, 22. Proverbs 12, 22. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. This is so important because that word detest, you can translate that for hate. God hates lying. So it's not, this is not a game. This is not some, something that, is, that you can decide, yes, no, no. God hates lying. He hates lying tongue. It's very clear, not just here, but all through the Bible. But some people have come out, I don't know how, but they have come out with the idea that there are good lies. White lies, right? That actually are good. No, that's a lie. <laughs> there are not such a thing as a good lie. Lie is a lie. And God hates lie. Even so, uh, he also, he doesn't lie, half truth. Why? And why this is important? Why God hates it? Because Lying is against God's character. And again, this is essential. Many times we're thinking, okay, God has a list of, of sins that he doesn't like and because he is a bore, boring God and he doesn't ask to enjoy life. No, that's not how it works. This is how it works. God is true and Lying is against him, and that's why this is a sin, because we're going against who he is. And you can apply that to every other sin. So you think who God is, what are his characteristics, everything that is opposed to him will be a sin, right? Verse, uh, in the same chapter, verse 19, a lying tongue last only a moment. So at the end of the day, truth is going to come out. You know, there is a saying in Spanish, and I found out that there is also the same saying in English. Uh, it is something like this. A liar is sooner caught than a cripple. A liar is sooner caught than a cripple. Is, is that a saying in English? Or Google was wrong. See, Google is wrong sometimes. So don't follow Google. Follow the Bible. It's not a saying in English. So the meaning of that saying is that if you are lying, at some point it's going to be discovered. So this is what the, this text is saying. A lying tongue lasts only a moment. So you are saying something that is not true, but at some point it's going to be revealed. It's going to be revealed. Jesus said in Luke 12, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not make will not be made known. So things are going to come to the surface and everyone will see it now or later or at some point in eternity and will be responsible for our words. So where's the point here? God is saying, I'm true. Will you follow me? Will you imitate me? Are you going to be my children by behaving as I am? Or are you going to follow what is opposite to me? Proverbs 26, 18 and 19. Like a maniac shooting flaming arrows of death is one who deceives their neighbor or their friend and says, I was only joking. I was only joking. Some people take this lightly, but this is not a joke. Lying breaks trust and that's the foundation of every relationship so this again is not a joke it's, it is serious lies only lead to bondage and shame lying has the purpose of covering up something we don't want to come out because we know it's wrong 
or it's going to be embarrassing, or we may have consequences. But let me tell you this. Lying will never fix the problem. That's one of the reasons that we lie, to fix the problem. It will never fix the problem. It will make it bigger. But Jesus said in John 8, 32, then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you I say this every Sunday, but are you awake? <laughs> and the truth will set you free. free. The truth, not the lie. So why do we lie? Truth is the solution. We speak truth. Lying is so anti-God that even Jesus calls Satan the father of lies. That's why... We should get away from it completely. All liars, Proverbs 19, 9, will be punished. A false witness will not go unpunished. And whoever pours out lies will perish. Even Revelation 22, at the end of the Bible, says that there is no place in heaven for those who love and practice falsehood. You can go and read it. I, I'm not inventing this. <laughs> I don't made up this, this verse. It's in the Bible. You know why I'm so emphatic here? Because we should be a community of truth. We should always speak truth everywhere. That's what, what our world is needing more than ever. It's a severe warning. Proverbs is also talking about all other kinds of lies. And we don't have time to go through them. But, uh, but I encourage you to read through Proverbs as the challenge that we have given you. One chapter per day. There are other kinds of lies like, uh, such as flattery, seductive uh, speech, or slander. And let me tell you this. All of those are satanic practices that destroy our lives. They destroy our lives. Sometimes it's not easy to speak truth, but that's why the Bible says that it has to go hand in hand with love. Truth in love. And anything else that is not based on truth is going to destroy our lives and relationships. Okay, let's go to another one that was strong enough. <laughs> not a folly speaking is gossip. And I know nobody here practices that, okay? I, I know that we are saints and we have never, ever, or we won't gossip at all. But this is another serious topic in, in this book. Proverbs 18, 8. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the inmost parts. What does this mean? Well, you know, gossip for some people is like a new sport. New sport. They play it. They practice it. They get together with other people that love gossip. Uh, they get pretty good about gossiping. They really enjoy it. But the problem is that it's not a sport. It's a sin. This is a sin. And it's so serious that we sometimes lose track of how harmful it is. Gossip is someone who runs from person to person telling matters that ought to be concealed. Whether those are true or false, doesn't matter. There are things that you shouldn't share with anyone. Period. There are things that you shouldn't share with anyone. Period. And if you are concerned about that person, the Bible is very clear. Matthew uh, 18, 15 to 18. You go to that person and you have a conversation privately. And you can confront that person and say, hey, Josue. I was going to say Bruce, but he's not here. Uh, hey, Josue. I saw you doing this. Or I think that you are wrong with this. But you don't go to Randy to talk about Josue. That's gossip. You go to Josue to talk about Josue. Or you go to Randy to talk about Randy. 
But you don't go to another person to talk about the third person. That's gossip and that destroys. It's clear, right? We all know it, but we sometimes we don't practice it. Think how many people have been wounded by gossip. How many friendships have been destroyed. Proverbs warns that gossip is the source of quarrels. That we should avoid that kind of person. Because it's going to destroy lives and relationships. You know, this is interesting. There's some people, even Christians, have tried to Christianize this kind of sin. You know how we do it? Sean, I'm going to tell you something so you can pray. That's how we do it. And we, we feel that we are very spiritual. Daniel, I'm going to tell you something about Sean. So please pray with me. Right? And I feel good. <laughs> and I'm sinning. It's so clear in the Bible. I have something with Sean. I go to Sean. And I talk to him. Directly. And if he doesn't listen to me, I can find a witness. And then if he doesn't listen to the witness, we can go to the church. And finally, probably, that person is not a believer. And still, we should love them. Because that's what the Bible says. Is that clear? Kind of. It's okay. You deal with it. I'm doing my job. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is so serious that even Romans 1, 29 to 32, that is a list of sins, includes gossip. And this is describing those people that have, according to Romans, depraved minds. So this is not a secondary class of sin. Where I'm not killing anyone, I'm not doing this kind of thing, I'm just gossiping. Just gossiping, just, right? It's so simple. It's not. It's very serious. A third kind of folly speaking in Proverbs. Talking too much and talking too soon. And let me open my heart with you. I can, I can identify with this sin about speaking. I can tell you that when I came to the States, that helped me with that. Not because I was wise, because I didn't have that many words. In English. <laughs> so uh, I, I had to reframe myself uh, because I didn't know how to say things. Not because I was wise. And um, I hope that I have matured uh, through the years. Um, but I have learned that I, have, I, I should be more quiet sometimes. Um, and use it's even better my, my words. This is what Proverbs 10, 19, this is what it says. And this is the ESV uh, version. I don't know, we have the, uh, yes. When words are many, transgression is not lacking. But whoever restrains his lips is prudent. NIV is a little bit confusing, at least for me. When words are many, transgression is not lacking. James 1.19 says the same, in the same line, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. When we are controlling our tongue, that means a safe life, according to Proverbs 13. A loose tongue means poverty or foolishness. So when we talk too much, and when we talk too soon, we show that there's probably a problem in our hearts. Why we do, do we talk too much? Why do we have so much to say? Do we feel that our words are more important than the other people's words? Why don't we wait and listen more carefully? And I was examining my own heart as I was writing this, this uh, message. When I do this, and I tell you that I can, again, I can identify with these behaviors many times. There is something inside of me, probably is my anxiety or the rush that I have, that is not letting me to be calm and just listen. But this, this is what the Bible is telling us to do. 
Be calm and listen. Pay attention. Be slow to speak. Be quick to listen. Sometimes I feel the need to share my thoughts, but probably I should trust God more and just listen and let God work. And let him take control of the situations and not depend on my own wisdom and my own resources. So this is me, my first day as a lead pastor, opening my heart to you. So now you can fire me if you want, but you know why I do this. Hopefully you can follow this example. The purpose of the message is that you can examine your heart. You can open it to God and let him work in your life. Because if we believe that we are right, that we are doing everything in a, in a good way, how God is going to change us? Jesus was very clear, right? The, the people that are healthy, they don't need a doctor. So if you are healthy, you don't need him. I do. I need him. Hopefully you too. And I'm sure that you have experienced the effects of folly speaking in your life. And I'm sure that you have been hurt somehow. And probably you have hurt others with your words. And that's why, and this is essential, the fruit of the Spirit is so important. You know what we need? We need to speak in love, speak with joy. We need the forbearance, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and the self-control as the main characteristics of our speech. We need the Holy Spirit controlling what we say every day. Now let's go to the wise or the commendable speech. Second part. And I'm going to take just a few minutes with this. Because in the same way that our speech can hurt others or destroy relationships, it can also build up. Our speech can encourage and exhort our brothers and sisters. In the same way that we are foolish when we speak too much and too soon, we are wise when we refrain our words. And that's the first commendable or wise speech. Restrain or refrain your words. And again, if you are taking notes, take note of these verses and read them later. Uh, Proverbs 13.3, 13.3, 17, 27, and 21.23. We just saw in 10.19 that more words mean more chances to fail. When you speak a lot, you have more chances to fail. Fewer words mean prudence. You know, I have a rock, and let me show it to you. It's in the next picture. I have this rock on my desk. And um, this is a reminder every day of this truth. And it, it is in Spanish. Probably you, you can't read it, but this is uh, Proverbs 12. 23. And my former pastor in Spain, he used to, um, he's, he passed uh, several years ago, but he liked to find rocks and write in some Bible verses and to give those away. So he gave me this one when I graduated from uh, Bible college. And what it says in the first part, just that's the only one that is written, the prudent keep their knowledge to themselves. But a fool's heart Blurts out folly. So if we want to be wise, we need to be humble and restrain our words. When we listen more and when we listen carefully, we show that we are caring for the other person because we are paying attention. We are showing the other person is important. And if that is not enough, uh, Proverbs 17, 28 should encourage us to restrain our words. Even fools, so if you're a fool, <laughs> even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. So even when we don't have the right words, if we keep silent, we're going to look like wise. You know, again, coming to the States uh, many years ago forced me to restrain my words, not because I didn't have an opinion but because I didn't have the words in English. And many times that's good too. Now I have more words and I need to be more careful. 
If you have a lot of words, be careful. It's, it's good to restrain, to refrain your words. But there are some words that have to be said. And Proverbs tells us that those who listen and receive these words are wise. Number two of this commendable speech. Words of reproof. Proverbs 15.10, whoever hates reproof will die. And Proverbs 13.18, whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame. Interestingly, we frequently talk when we shouldn't. <laughs> and we don't talk when we should. I don't know why we do that. But when we should speak, we don't. And where we shouldn't, we do. You know, being a part of the Christ's body means to speak what we have to say to other people. Being a part of Christ's body means living in community. It means caring for each other and speaking the truth in love to one another. And of course, if you haven't cared for me at all, if you don't know my circumstances, if you don't know my struggles, if you don't know my life, I don't think it would be appropriate for you to come and confront me in your with your first interaction, right? And I'm saying to me, it, that applies to every one of us. When you don't care for the other person, don't go and reprove them <laughs> as your first interaction. You need to go and love them first, and then you're gaining the right to go and speak all our things. Words of, the, of reproof, rebuke, or correction should always come from those who love us. It's not easy to come to your brother or your sister and confront them about their sinful behavior or inappropriate attitude. But if we really want to grow spiritually, we need to help one another in this way. The book of Proverbs says that by embracing reproof, we will gain intelligence, we'll love knowledge, we'll dwell among the wise, and we'll be on the path of life. That's why this is so important, the words of reproof. Now, there are two aspects here about the words of reproof. If those, if those are a blessing, I have two questions. Are you willing to receive reproof? Are you willing to listen when someone who loves you is confronting you, exhorting you, or correcting you? And the second one is, are you willing to give those words to your brothers and sisters around you? Again, it's not fun. It's not easy. But it's important. That's what Proverbs says. And finally, the third one. Because there is a way to speak that blesses the hearer. Um, Proverbs 12, 25. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers, up, cheers it up. So good words bring joy. Words that encourage, words that affirm, words that help you see the goodness of God, words that praise the Lord. I'm thankful because a lot of you have sent me emails, notes, or just even approached me saying that you are praying for me, supporting me. You don't know how much that means for me in my family. And that's the same for all of us. We need those words of encouragement, those that help us to, to keep following God. Do you speak this kind of words that make hearts to be glad? Verse... Um, Proverbs 20, 15. Gold it is and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. There are so many people saying foolish things nowadays. Social media is full of that. But it is so good when you find someone with prudent and wise words. Those are highly valued. In this world that has lost its way, we need to bring God's knowledge to the places where we are at. We need to bring what God is saying to our environments. We need to be the messenger, messengers of God's wisdom. The world is needing direction more than ever. And God is providing that for us. So, let God use you, use us, by surrendering our lives to him by being filled by his Holy Spirit, and by being willing to speak life to this world. But keep this in mind. 
This is very important. I open my message with this and I'm closing it with this. This is not just information. This is not just information. Information only, knowledge only is not going to change your heart. You need to let God work in your life. Actually, information it is, is useless if there is no fear of the Lord. So these two questions for us as we close. Do we want to be the people who honor God with our words and use them for his glory and purposes? It was a question. It was an actual question. It, was, it wasn't rhetorical. Do you want to be the people that honor God with your speech? Yes. Amen. So let's submit to God and may let us speak wisely. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word. It's so deep. It's so amazing and so challenging at the same time. It confronts us with our reality, with our sin, with our flaws, with our weaknesses. But it also shows us that you are a powerful God, that you are an awesome God, that you have words of life. So we pray today that you help us to take your word and to apply it in, in our lives. We want our hearts being transformed by your power. We want to follow you. We want to be more like you. And we want to bring these words to the world that is so needed. Lord, help us to be alive with your word everywhere we're at. And to you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We just stand up. We're going to finish worshiping today.